how to create your own OpenVPN server on an Ubuntu Linux VPS. In this video, I'll take you through the complete process of setting up your very own OpenVPN server. We will first begin by creating our virtual private server or VPS. My VPS host of choice for this video demonstration is called DigitalOcean. Once we have set up our VPS, we're going to need to install an SSH client so that we can log into our DigitalOcean server. The SSH client that we're going to be installing in this video is called Putty. Once we have logged into our VPS using Putty, we're then going to run a script to install OpenVPN on our DigitalOcean server. The script is hosted on a GitHub repository by NYR and the repository on GitHub is called OpenVPN-install. Once we have installed OpenVPN on our DigitalOcean VPS, we're going to need to install a client on our local device to use our VPN. VPN. The client, of course, is going to be the official VPN client by OpenVPN called OpenVPN Connect. Lastly, we'll check if our VPN is working by going to a website called whatismyipaddress.com and we'll be checking that our IP address is not our actual IP address, but in fact the IP address of our DigitalOcean VPS. This will show us that OpenVPN is indeed working correctly. Okay, so let's start off by navigating to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link for DigitalOcean. If you don't already have a DigitalOcean account, it will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out DigitalOcean free for 60 days. I'll put this link in the video description below so that you can click on it for your convenience. To create a DigitalOcean account, simply fill in the email address field here and pick a password and then click on create free account. You can also sign up with Google or your GitHub account. Now I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm just simply going to click on sign in. Once you've signed into your DigitalOcean account, you'll be taken to your DigitalOcean dashboard. At the top right hand corner, underneath your DigitalOcean username, you'll be able to see your $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits. To create our DigitalOcean VPS, simply click on the green create button here. Once you've done that, look for where it says droplet. Droplets is the DigitalOcean service that allows you to create cloud servers, also known as VPSs. Droplets are what DigitalOcean simply calls its VPSs. Click on Droplets. You'll now need to configure your droplet, firstly by choosing a region. I'm going to choose London for this video demonstration. Scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. Make sure OS is selected if it already isn't. As you can see, it's already selected for me. Click on Ubuntu if it's not already selected. So Ubuntu is going to be our OS of choice and we're going to need to choose the version of Ubuntu. So just simply click on this arrow here and I'm going to select the latest LTS version, which at the time of recording of this video is 22.04 LTS X64. Once you've chosen your OS and the version, scroll down until you see where it says choose size. For your droplet type, you have two types. The first is shared CPU and the other is dedicated CPU. Shared CPU droplet type should be more than enough for your OpenVPN server. Server. Click on basic under shared CPU if it already isn't selected. Next, scroll down to where it says CPU options. You have three choices, regular, which has a disk type of SSD, premium Intel, and premium AMD, which both have a disk type of NVMe SSDs. Premium Intel and premium AMDs are slightly more expensive, and for your own OpenVPN server, regular should be enough, so just click on regular here to select it. Underneath, you'll see various plans. You could click on show all plans if you need to. However, for this video demonstration, we're going to be going with a $6 a month server, which gives you access to one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabyte SSD, and a terabyte or a thousand gigabytes of bandwidth. Once you have selected your digital ocean plan, scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Make sure password is selected. If it already isn't, simply click on it and then create a root password. The root password will be the password used to log into your digital ocean droplet via an SSH client. So I'm just going to choose a password now. Once you've chosen your password and satisfied all the digital ocean password requirements, scroll down to the very bottom to where you see where it says host name. Click on this text box and delete what's already pre-typed. Now enter your droplet name. So I'm going to call my droplet openvpn-server. Once you've chosen a host name for your droplet, all that's left to do now is to click on create droplet. Once done, your digital ocean droplet will start being created. While that's being created, I'm just going to navigate to my next tab here. You'll need to open up a new tab if you don't already have one open and go to the following URL address openvpn.net slash client slash. Once you're here, you'll be taken to the official download page for OpenVPN Connect client. Underneath, you'll be able to see the various operating systems available for the OpenVPN client. You have the option for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and Chrome OS. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click on Windows. If you're on a mobile device, you can just go to the Google Play Store, for example, if you're on Android, or the App Store if you're on iOS, and install the OpenVPN Connect client. If you're 
you're on a computer like myself, select your operating system and then click on the download OpenVPN Connect button, which as you can see for me, it says for Windows. So I'm just going to click on it now. The OpenVPN Connect client will then be downloaded. I'm just going to click on my browser's download button here at the top right hand corner and underneath recent download history, look for your most recent download, which of course will be the OpenVPN Connect installer. So I'm simply going to click on it to open up the installer. A small window will then open called OpenVPN Connect Setup, where you'll need to go through the installation wizard of OpenVPN. So I'm just simply going to click on next. You'll then be greeted with the end user license agreement, which you can read in your own time. If you agree to the terms in the license agreement above, just simply click on I accept the terms in the license agreement and then click on next. All that's left to do now is to click on install. If you're on Windows like myself, you'll be greeted with the user account control, which asks you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You have the option to click on no or yes. Of course, I want to install OpenVPN Connect Client on my Windows PC, so I'm going to click on yes. The OpenVPN Connect Client will then be installed. You'll then be greeted with OpenVPN's data collection, use and retention policies, which you can read through in your own time. Once you've read through it and you agree with it, just simply click on agree. Great, so now we've installed the OpenVPN Connect Client on our local device. We'll come back to this later, so I'm just going to minimize this for the time being, and I'm going to click on finish on the installer. Let's check on our DigitalOcean droplet. So I'm just going to click on the previous tab here just to see if our DigitalOcean droplet has been created. And as you can see by the green status symbol at the left hand side underneath droplets, next to our droplet name, it has indeed been created and is currently active. To the right of our droplet name, you can see our droplet's IP address. Navigate to the right hand side of your droplet's IP address and click on copy to copy the IP address to your clipboard. Great, so our DigitalOcean VPS is now up and running. What we'll now need to do is to install an SSH client so that we can connect to it. To do this, I'm going to navigate to the following tab. You'll need to open up another tab and navigate to putty.org. Once you're here, at the very top, you should see download putty. Click on the hyperlink text, which says download putty. You'll then be taken to putty's download page. As you can see, Putty is available on the following two operating systems. If you have another operating system other than these two, you'll need to download and install and use an alternative SSH client. I'm currently on a 64-bit Windows operating system, so I'll be clicking on this and proceeding with the installation. If you would like a video on how to install and use Putty, I'll put a link to a video of mine in the video description below and as a card at the top right-hand corner of this video. Once you have downloaded and installed Putty, just minimize your browser to be taken to your desktop. Desktop. As you can see on our desktop, we got the OpenVPN Connect shortcut. I'm just going to move this here. And of course, if you have installed Putty, you'll also have the Putty shortcut. Now, if your PC hasn't created a Putty shortcut, you can simply click on search at the bottom left-hand corner of your computer and search for the Putty program or application. So I'm just going to open up Putty by double-clicking on the shortcut here. Once you've done that, underneath hostname or IP address, paste in the IP address of your DigitalOcean droplet. Leave the port as 22 and keep the connection type as SSH. Click on open. When you first connect to your VPS via Putty, you'll be greeted with the Putty security alert, which basically tells you that the server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. This is a very normal notification by Putty. You have the option to click on cancel, connect once or accept. I'm going to click on accept as I want to add the key to Putty's cache and carry on connecting to my DigitalOcean VPS. I'm going to maximize the Putty terminal window here. So we're going to be logging in as root. So simply type the word root and hit enter on your keyboard. And for the password, this is going to be the root password that you chose during the creation of your DigitalOcean droplet and then hit enter on your keyboard. Once done, you'll be logged into your DigitalOcean server. Next, open back up your browser and navigate to the following URL address github.com slash nyr slash openvpn dash install. Once you're here, scroll down until you see where it says installation. You should see the installation script highlighted. It begins with the word wget. So all I'm going to do is left click and highlight this entire script command, right click on it and click on copy. And then I'm going to open back up the Putty terminal window. Once you're back in here, right click to paste in the script command and then hit enter on your keyboard to begin the installation of OpenVPN on your DigitalOcean droplet. At the very top, you can see it says which IPv4 address should be used. You have three options and you simply need to enter either one, two or three by default, the script will pick for you. So as you can see, it's picking one, which is the same IPv4 address of our DigitalOcean droplet. So all I'm going to do is hit enter on my keyboard to go with the default option. The OpenVPN install script then asks you which protocol should OpenVPN use, UDP, which is recommended, or TCP, one for UDP or two for TCP. As you can see, the default by the script is one, which is UDP. So I'm just going to go with the default. So I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard. Which port should OpenVPN listen to? 
As you can see, it's going with port 1194, which is the port I'm going to be going with. If you want an alternative port, just type it in here. I'm going to be going with the default, so I'm going to be hitting enter on my keyboard. Next, you can select a DNS server for the clients. You can either use the current system resolvers, Google 1.1.1.1, OpenDNS, Quad9 or AdGuard. The DNS server that the script is automatically choosing by default for me is current system resolvers, which is number one. I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard to go with the default. The OpenVPN install script then asks us to enter a name for the first client. So I'm going to type in here, client one. That will be the first client name that I'm going to be going with. You can call your client name anything you want. Once you've chosen a name, hit enter on your keyboard. The script then says OpenVPN is ready to begin. Press any key to continue. So I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard once again. OpenVPN will then begin installing on your DigitalOcean VPS. I'll be back with you guys once the installation has completed. If during the install process, you're greeted with the following purple screen, simply press tab once on your keyboard to highlight the word OK and then hit enter on your keyboard. The OpenVPN server installation will then continue. All right, so if we look at the very bottom, you can see it says finished. The client configuration is available in and then the following directory. So you can see client1.ovpn has been successfully created and this .ovpn file will be imported into our OpenVPN Connect client so that we can use OpenVPN. Underneath it says new clients can be added by running this script again. So let's say if you have another device or you have friends or family members that want to use your VPN also, you can't give them client1.ovpn as you can only use 1.ovpn for each device. So if you want to make one for your smartphone, for example, you'll need to run the script again. So I'm just going to right click again to paste in the wget openvpn install script once again, and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. As you can see at the very top, it says openvpn is already installed. And then you have a couple of options. You can add a new client, revoke an existing client, remove openvpn or exit. Now, if you wanted to add a new client, you'd simply type one and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be asked to provide a name for the new client. Let's go with the name client two. Once you've chosen the name, just hit enter. And as easy as that, a second client has has been added called client2 and the configuration is available in slash root slash client2.ovpn. It's basically in the same location as client1.ovpn. To check if these .ovpn clients have indeed been created, simply type ls on your keyboard. This command will list all the files and directories in the current directory that you're in. We're currently in the root directory. So all I'm going to do is hit enter on my keyboard. And as you can see, we've got client1.ovpn and client2.ovpn, two clients that we created using the OpenVPN install script. We're now going to need to get the information that's contained within the .ovpn files. For this video demonstration, I'm only going to do client1.ovpn as the process for client2.ovpn is exactly the same. To get the information contained within client1.ovpn, simply type the following command, CA T space and then your client name followed by .ovpn. So I'm going to type client1.ovpn. Once you've typed that in, hit enter on your keyboard. And as you can see, the following text is now visible. Scroll up to the very top here to just under the cat command that you typed and then copy everything below it. So start off by highlighting the word client and going all the way down to the very bottom to where it says TLS-crypt. Once you've got this all highlighted, it will be automatically copied to your clipboard and now you can minimize your putty terminal window. Also minimize your browser. You'll then be on your desktop. Now what you'll need to do is open up a text editor. The text editor that I'm going to be using is called Notepad. So I'm just going to double click on the Notepad shortcut. I'm going to maximize Notepad and then I'm going to right click and click on paste to paste in all the client1.ovpn information. Just make sure you've got everything from the bottom where it says TLS-crypt all the way to where it says says client. Once you've got all that information, left click on file and click on save as. Not save, but save as. Now you'll need to pick a file name. So delete what's already default in there and then match exactly the name of the .ovpn file, which was client1.ovpn. And as you can see, I'm saving this file to my desktop. Once you've done that, click on save. You can now close out of this file. And now if we look on our desktop, we've got a new file called client1. And if we hover over this file and right click on it and click on properties, you can see the files called client1 and the type of file is a .ovpn file also known as OVPN profile. I'm going to click on the X now. Now all we need to do is add client1.ovpn to our OpenVPN Connect client. So I've already got my 
client open here. So I'm just going to click on it. By default, you'll be in the VA URL for import profile. We're going to be importing the OpenVPN profile using upload file. So click on upload file. And then all we need to do is drag and drop the .ovpn profile to upload it. So I'm just going to move my OpenVPN connect client to the right here. I'm going to click and hold client1.ovpn and I'm going to drag it into this box here and I'm going to let go. Under imported profile, we'll need to pick a profile name. So I'm going to delete what's currently in there. I'm going to call it client1 space dash space London. Once you've picked a profile name, click on connect. And as you can see, the OpenVPN profile client one London has been added to your OpenVPN connect client and you've been automatically connected. If you want to disconnect from your VPN, all you need to do is click on this toggle. I'm going to leave it connected for the time being. And now what we'll need to do is to check if our VPN is working correctly. So I'm just going to open up my browser and I'm going to click on this tab here. You'll need to open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address. What is my IP address? And then hit enter to navigate to the site. Once you're here, you may be greeted with a privacy policy, which you can see all the options, disagree or agree. I'm just going to click on disagree here. And as you can see, what is my IP address.com will tell you what your current IP is, which of course for me is 159.65.24.197. To the right hand side, you can see a map location of that IP address, the ISP, which is Digital Ocean, city is London, region is England, and the country is the UK. This IPv4 address matches exactly our Digital Ocean Droplets IP address, which means our VPN is working as expected. All right, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to create your own OpenVPN server on an Ubuntu Linux VPS. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video.